Alright guys, welcome back to another video here from the Back to Beta server. And between episodes, I have made some massive progress, as you can probably tell on the slime farm. Um, yeah, I don't know where to really start. I've been spending quite a bit of time on this. Um, I'll start, I guess, in order of the, the things I did. Um, but I would say that this room is, is finished, I think. The slime farm is officially done. So, uh, yeah, let me show you over here. So the first thing I kind of did was, um, originally that, uh, that bar was down here. So I, I brought that up. I had to raise the roof by three blocks, I think at least. Um, which, yeah, you can see makes a huge difference to the overall size of the room. And then I, uh, I raised this up because I think this was really cool. And I added the slime sign, which I think looks really good. Um, I made it out of sticky pistons behind is glowstone so it actually glows um, and then it has a background of obsidian which is really cool um, and then there's the little uh, 2 by 2 um, lime green wool there which is like you know meant to be a bit of a slime ball uh, but yeah I really like the science pretty cool and then you come down you can kind of see the slime down on this side so I think that that looks good especially like it wasn't looking too great uh, when I had that lower and there was this platform sort of in the way but now I think it kind of works um, there's sort of the two two different focal points, I guess. And uh, yeah, I attach these to the roof. And the roof design's pretty cool. There's um, a ton of furnaces. Um, I don't know if anyone knows how much cobblestone this took, um, but it took a lot. <laughs> uh, spoilers, it took a lot. Um, so yeah, I did the roof. Um, and I had a lot of suggestions for these little pockets here, um, which I'll get to in a minute. But um, some of the suggestions I sort of incorporated into uh, this roof design here and here, um, where I had sort of this checkerboard, so it kind of ties in um, the floor and the roof together. And then I also had this uh, sort of grass, so it's like another point of green. Um, but like a different sort of shade, which I think look, looks really good. Um, so yeah, I feel like the room shape and structure all came out pretty well. I wanted to keep this roof a little bit bland so that um, your focus was on the actual proper details. Um, I made the walls a bit higher, and I really love these details with the paintings on each side here. I really love these because we already put paintings down the bottom here, um, and then having them over there, like just sort of filling those big flat walls looks really great. Um, I did consider putting more paintings around, but I thought, I don't know, it looks really good just to have the two focused paintings. Like, everything else is kind of flat, like, and your eyes are drawn directly to the slime, directly to the paintings, you know, I, I think it just really, I think, I think that looks really cool in my opinion. Um, and yeah, then the next thing I did was add these sort of little, uh, I guess, piston workstations, so, um... I had quite a few suggestions from you guys on what I should add in these spaces and the main kind of common theme was that it needed more green and I didn't necessarily need more detail because these were already quite detailed. I didn't need much more detail so I thought um, we'll put a bit of slime in here, you know, put the moss in, um, sort of climb out the wall and then um, have the one thing that slime balls are actually useful for which is sticky pistons, um, you know, sort of strain about. Now I'm not sure about this corner one, this one's a bit weird but um, I don't know, I kind of like it. I like that there's just the sticky pistons here, they've got glowstone underneath as well um, so that they're kind of lit up. And uh, yeah, I think that's kind of cool. The only one that is different, so as you can see, there's pistons over there, over there, and over there. The only one that's different is this one, which there was a natural lava source down here, so I decided I'd put some glass, some glass down. But otherwise, they've all just got like these piston workstations, which um, yeah, I think I think in the end looks really good. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this room turned out. Um, I hope you guys think it looks pretty cool as well. Um, I managed to also put in some lighting everywhere so that I didn't need any torches, which I'm very satisfied about, apart from inside there, which I don't mind. Um, so yeah, I think this this room turned out really cool. I'm really proud of how this slime farm worked out. Um, I don't ever need to collect slime ever again, I'm not going to lie. So any of the slime that fall into these chambers, um, I don't ever really need, I don't think. Um, I have so much slime just building this farm, so yeah. But uh, it was a really fun project. Now, it isn't technically done, I guess. Well, the, the slime farm itself is done. Um, but if you turn around here, the staircase and the entrance to the slime farm isn't quite done yet. Um, I did a little bit of um, detailing here, and by detailing I mean I put cobblestone on the walls and smooth stone on the ceiling um, all the way back up to the top spot. Uh, but I haven't done anything with this little spot here. So 
I don't think I'm going to make it too interesting. It's probably just going to follow this cobblestone theme just to clean it up. Um, and then, yeah, the, the main idea is that you walk into here and it's really nice and detailed. So, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna do that and I'll show you guys what that looks like. Probably nothing crazy, but uh, yeah, I'm going to do that now. Okay, so the slime farm is officially done. Um, I'm going to just take you through the full kind of, I guess, way to get in and out. Uh, you've got that little piston door there. Uh, now you can take the rail, which I don't think I'll do, I just want to walk through it and show you uh, just the extra thing I've done. But yeah, that would normally send off the rail. Whoa! Oh my god. Whew. Damn. That is... That one fully scared me. What the heck? That, that, one, that creeper fully jump scared me. He followed me into my, into my hole. Oh my god. I thought I was safe. <laughs> Oh, all right. Well, that woke me up. Um, but yeah, basically, when you press that button, it closes the door and sends the minecart down. But we're just going to walk down um, to get a better look at it, I guess. Uh, now, this rail, it just keeps going down, turns, and yeah, you saw the hallway before. Uh, but you can also, there's also like a on-foot access if you don't have a minecart, um, where you just kind of walk this way. And this is pretty much the whole uh, detailing I've done to this whole thing. It's, it's nothing special. But uh, at least it looks kind of clean now, which is nice. So yeah, you sort of come down to here, and this is where the minecart would meet up. And then uh, you walk around the corner, and down into the slime farm. So yeah, I'm very happy with how this turned out. This feels like a really cool, uh, cool feeling, uh, I don't know, build? I really like it. It's a cool underground, uh, underground bunker looking build. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys like it too. And I might just show you coming into our storage area. This is all the slime balls we have. I don't think I'm ever going to make this many pistons. At least it'll take me a long time to make this many. So, uh, yeah. We've got plenty of slime balls, which is awesome. Aha. Uh -huh. So, let me know in the comments if you recognize this build. Uh, either from my channel or from the Yogscast channel. Uh, this was uh, a Halloween special that I did last year with the boy Ryan. We recreated this pyramid from uh, the Yogscast uh, Shadow of Israfel series. And uh, yeah, we did um, did like a little parkour. There was like a fun little bit of redstone to make it a little more difficult. Um, and yeah, that video is up on my channel um, if you want to check it out. Uh, but we have returned to this area because uh, last night, um, me, Ryan, and Olives... We started this, uh, this haunted mansion. Uh, now I, I was there for the start of this building and, uh, I provided a lot of resources for it, um, but I had to go to bed. So, uh, Ryan and Olives have absolutely transformed this build into, um, this really cool kind of, uh, yeah, um, haunted, haunted mansion. It looks really good. Um... Yeah, so, yeah, like I said, I, I started with it, like, it was only the sort of front facade, and then, uh, yeah, came back, and it's now looking really cool. Um, so, yeah, basically, we want to do another Halloween special, um, and, uh, the idea is that, uh, yeah, I, I sort of thought it would be really cool to have a haunted mansion where your, the, the goal is to kind of, uh, collect a bunch of pumpkins and save them. Um, and yeah, the longer you're in the mansion, the more trapped it gets, so you can, you know, fall into, fall into holes and doors close behind you and things like that. So yeah, I'm going to spend a bit of time trying to conceptualize that. I have no real plan. Um, but yeah, obviously first there's got to be some kind of an interior in here. So I guess that's my first point of call is creating a bit of an interior in here. Um, so that I can, yeah, place the pumpkins and work out the traps. Okay, so I've started to lay out the foundation of the interior, and uh, this is what it's looking like so far. We've got this long, creepy corridor here. Uh, obviously, everything right now is subject to change, but, um, I'm, yeah, because I'm just making this up as I go, but I think it's uh, it's coming along nicely. I've got some dirt scaffolding as kind of walls, and we've got these nice, thin, kind of narrow hallways that kind of twist and turn everywhere. I'm thinking this can be a dining room, because it's like the biggest room, it's got nice grand windows. Although I'm thinking I might also add like a little uh, top layer as well, with like a little hidden room up there maybe. Um, yeah, and I think we're going to have like pressure plate activated doors that might, you know, trigger some events. I don't know, we'll, we'll, we'll see how we progress. Uh, this side you've got, you know, another little room, and 
sort of access to this tower, uh, another little room. Yeah, like I've just been sort of creating little rooms. Um, and obviously we've got all this space up here. Um, so as you come around here, I'm thinking uh, there's going to be a staircase that comes around here and goes up and that'll lead to the sort of top sections of the, uh, of the build. And then there'll also be, there's a bit of space underground as well. Um, I think there'll also be a way to sort of get downstairs into the basement. Now, I don't think I'll make the basement too huge or anything, um, because I don't have much time, if I'm honest. But, uh, yeah, that's sort of where I'm at with the plans. And so far, so good. So, yeah, I'm just going to keep keep going at it. Okay, so I have been grinding away at this for the past sort of day and a bit, and uh, I think it is fully done. Uh... Yeah, all the interior and the whole objectives and everything, and I think it's turned out really well. Um, so, the whole idea of the mansion is that you need to save as many pumpkins as possible. Um, and this is sort of the final room where you've got two pumpkins in here. Um, and it's sort of a problem-solving thing, and uh, yeah, almost like a, a little bit of an escape room-esque type deal, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, this requires two players um, to actually complete, so if there's any back to beta members who want to um, try this out, uh, stop watching now because there'll be a little bit of uh, spoiler action, so yeah. Um, but yeah, basically these first two doors, they're all locked so you can't get in here, but this is the final objective room. Um, now there's two ways to go, and I don't think I'm going to go through the whole thing um, with you because I kind of want to like show... The perspectives of the people who actually try it um, but yeah basically there's two ways you can go the first way is this way where there's some materials and you have to kind of figure out how to open the bookshelves uh, or open uh, I guess open the first sort of clue um, and there's some materials which should hopefully help you craft a lever and then uh, you know indicate that you should probably put it on a bookshelf with the book that's what I'm hoping and this is where the first pumpkin is and down here I'm hoping they notice that there's a button here, and when I press this, you'll hear a piston go off on this side, um, before this one goes down. Oh, and uh, this one's supposed to help you get up. There we go. So, uh, yeah, that piston that activates over there, that's going to be around this side, uh, over here, which is going to push up this, uh, this stair block here. Um, but before we get to that, I'm hoping that the next player, so the first player will go around there and start solving that. The second player will come around here, and they might do some investigating. They'll walk in here, they'll see that there's a pumpkin up here. Um, they'll open this door, and they'll find some more materials, like sticks and gunpowder. Now, the gunpowder is useless, but the sticks are actually used for something, which I'll tell you in a second. They'll walk around here. Now, they'll notice this painting, and they'll see that there's a gap behind here. It's the most obvious hidden painting ever, hidden room ever, so they'll probably run full pelt into it, and then they'll step onto this pressure plate, it closes a door behind them, and uh, sets off this dispenser, which is going to shoot out um, a bunch of arrows, so it'll kind of try and kill them, which is funny. Um, now this door does eventually open, because um, I, yeah, it's, I don't want to be too inconvenient, but anyway, there's a, there's another pumpkin here, this is, it's a trap, uh, Star Wars reference. Um, but there's also a chest up here, which has some more sticks, which again, like I said, are useful. Um, so yeah, that's the next room. That'll be kind of fun, I think. A bit surprising. Uh, now, there was three sticks? Three sticks in this one? Or two sticks? Three sticks in there, there's two sticks in here, and then there's another two sticks over there. So in total, there's seven sticks? Yeah, seven sticks, uh, which is um, required to... Uh, progress, which I'll tell you in a second. There's also a pumpkin here, which you can see with a chest. Um, so it's sort of like, how do I open this door as well, um, is kind of the mystery. So, anyway, you've got all your sticks, and uh, the other player presses the button, this pushes up, and the other player can come up into here. And now this is where the sticks come in. There's a ladder going up here, with a missing, uh, missing uh, ladder here, so you can't quite get up. Uh, so yeah, that's what the sticks are for. You're going to need to craft the sticks and pull them together and things, um, just out of reach. Uh, this is a little lookout into the into the dining room, which is cool. Uh, once the sticks are crafted, I don't have I don't have anything on me. Uh, I I don't really need to go up there. But once the sticks are crafted, you can go up there. There's a button which, once pressed, will pop off the pumpkin, uh, which will drop it down. But it also 
Uh, there's a little divot there. It also pulls down a, uh, a double piston extender. So I'll go down and I'll show you that now. Okay, so if I come back through here, uh, that's where the pumpkin is. That when, when that button is pressed, the pumpkin will break, fall down here, but this will also open up. So I'll show you what that looks like with the redstone here. That will open up, but obviously only for the time that the button is pressed. So the other player is going to have to stay up there pressing that button um, while the other player looks down here. Uh, now, it's not immediately obvious where it is, but in there, there is a lever. And when you flick this, you can hear the door open and that gets you into this room. And once you collect this pumpkin, in here we have a music disc, uh, which will lead us to the next room. So over and around here, we've got these doors, and um, I've shown this off before. If you um, have a bud-powered um, uh, contraption, you can have it sort of be music-powered. So yeah. And then this leads you into the next few rooms. Uh, I'm going to actually just turn that down. Oh wait, I forgot that doesn't work. Uh, one moment. Yeah, so logging out and logging back in makes that, uh, makes that go away. But anyways, this gives you access to the next one, and I'm hoping that one player goes up the stairs and one player goes down the stairs. So it's kind of, you know, a cooperative thing. So the first player, this is a look into the redstone. <laughs> first player to come down, there's a chest for their stuff, um, and they come to this. Now there's a lever, and once you flip this lever, the door's open and you can come through. And there's a lava, like, moat, which is really cool. And now there's some gaps in here that a player can kind of jump into to get across, which is kind of cool. And at the very end, there's a pumpkin and a lever. And once that lever is flicked, it is half of the uh, combination, because there's a combination lock. It's half of the combination to open these doors. Now the second player will come up here. Uh, now this is probably somewhere I need to do a bit more work, like it needs a bit of decoration and stuff, but um, honestly it's, it doesn't matter too much. Um, but yeah, the uh, second player will come up here and they will go up to this pumpkin. It's a, sort of like a jumping parkour thing, not too, not too challenging, not as challenging as the lava thing. Uh, and once they collect that pumpkin, there's a chest above it which contains another lever. And that lever you're supposed to place here and that will push off that sand, as you can see there, which falls down uh, into a hole, into a hole there, which is the second part of the uh, combination lock. And if both of those, if both that, uh, the lever is flicked and the sand has fallen down, then the, uh, the iron doors will open up, which is, uh, which is really cool. Alright, and like I said, once those two uh, things are done, that lever is flicked and the sand comes down, the doors will open, and you'll get access to this room to save the final pumpkins. Now, the um, the last thing in this room, there's, a, there's one last challenge. Um, there's going to be a TNT sitting somewhere. Maybe it'll be... Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! God damn it! <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> that was not meant to happen. Oh <laughs> uh, no. Uh, I guess that's just what I get. For <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I guess that's what I get for placing that TNT. Anyway, uh, there's meant to be a TNT sitting there and it's not, not meant to blow up like that. Um, <laughs> I'm going to fix this up and then I'll explain the rest of that. Okay, all fixed up now, and I've got rid of those pressure plates. That was, uh, that was really dumb. Um, but, uh, I guess it was a good example of kind of what is gonna happen if, uh, if, if this TNT blows up. But I do want a TNT placed, uh, placed on the table here like this. Now, uh, when you break TNT, you can left-click it. You just left-click it, and it breaks. Um, but back in old Minecraft, when uh, TNT was first added, and uh, before Flint and Steel, when you used to left-click TNT, it used to activate. So instead of needing a Flint and Steel, uh, you just needed to punch it, which meant that in that example, like if you uh, if you had a TNT accidentally placed in your house, uh, yeah, unfortunately, it was going to blow up. Um, but in Beta Minecraft, that doesn't exist. Or does it? <laughs> um... Yeah, there is actually a way to create a punch-activated TNT without needing flint and steel. So in beta, you always need flint and steel. 
um, but uh, you can create a, uh, a punch activated TNT with a little piston glitch. So uh, yeah, we're gonna place a, t uh, a piston like this and like this. We're going to place an orange wool there and activate that. Have a bit of redstone go through there, place our TNT, and then boom, this is the whole setup. Now once I, once I remove this, it, uh, it pushes the, or pulls the orange wool into that TNT, and now we have a regular TNT, uh, or what looks like a regular TNT, but it is actually punch activated. Um, so I can show you it's, uh, it acts like, you know, like normal TNT, you can push it, you can pull it. Um, yeah, it's all normal, but it is, uh, punch activated. So if I get rid of a bit of these blocks here, drop it into the water, that's why I made this platform. Uh, and I'll take, even just to show, I'll take it out of my hand. So what I want is a sign on the TNT block inside that says, do not touch. And, uh, obviously whoever's gonna do this is gonna touch it. And, uh, yeah, when you left click it, it drops and it explodes. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a pretty cool little thing and I don't think anyone's gonna really be expecting that. Um at all. So yeah, I also, I'd like to mention at the top there where I said there was a pumpkin with a chest on top, there's a, uh, a lever in there and also a bucket of water. So if someone is smart enough, they can place down a bucket of water to prevent the explosion. But uh, yeah, we'll see how that happens. Oh, and one last thing I forgot to mention. Um, I was thinking I want to go through the redstone at some point. Um, maybe next episode, I was thinking maybe I'll go through the redstone and sort of explain it a little bit. Um, so yeah, let me know if you're interested in hearing about that, because I know some people um, find it very interesting. But uh, yeah, so yeah, let me know in the comments if you would like to see a little tour of the redstone, because I will definitely do that next episode. Alright, but that is going to be all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope you guys are excited to see this, uh, this haunted mansion actually get played in. Um, in the next episode, we're definitely going to be watching um, a couple of people play in the uh, in the mansion. So stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Um, I hope you're having a good day, and I'll see you in the next one. Later's.